Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about tags in BimWiki and why you might want to use them. Tags by themselves are not the most useful thing in BimWiki. That I mean, it was pretty slow moving through them and trying to find them in the different documents with the built-in functionality, but using a single Vim plugin made it a hell of a lot easier. So without further delay, let's get into it. So there are a lot of ways to use VimWiki and a lot of ways to set it up. I currently have a bunch of different directories like this and I have sub, basically sub wikis within my main VimWiki folder. My main VimWiki folder is just these three files, personal, shows, index, and index links to each of these sub wikis and their index files. So say you don't have this system and you just have a bunch of collection of different files and you don't necessarily want to go and find and go through all the hyperlink trails. You just want to immediately see a list of everything that is tagged, in this case, Python. And you want to look at all of your items that are tagged Python, quickly look at them and say, ah, that's the one I wanted to look at and go to it. Well, this is how you're going to do that with what we're going to set up today. So currently I have this uh, secret hack uh, mapped to leader T and I'm going to type Python, close off the colon and enter. And in the quick fix buffer, it will actually load up every single item that has the Python tag. And it'll even tell you where it found it in the document. And it has this directory structure because of the way I have my VimWiki set up. And you can find more about that in the card that I'll put up there. But I have uh, at least four files here with the Python, hot, um, Python tag. This one also has the hotkeys tag, which you can see in here but what we care about is the Python one, and I actually wanted to go to hotkeys. So in the quick fix buffer, I'm just using you know, HJKL here. I can just go to this one, and just like in VimWiki, I can press enter, and it will actually open up that file, and now it's that's the active buffer. So I have another buffer below that is still open, so the quick fix buffer doesn't close once you select a tag file, uh, or file that has been tagged, so you can e easily just go right back to it. So. To do that, I also have my own uh, key bindings to actually move through the buffers up and down. Normally it's like, I think it's control W, control, and then HJKL, whichever one to move in that direction. I just have them mapped to uh, control HJKL, so it's easier to actually move around, less key presses. So I'm in this file, I do what I want, I save it or whatever, I can go back to the quick fix buffer, pick a different one, go to it, and now I'm doing stuff in this file. And so with this way, it's actually easy to jump around your different files and do operations, make changes, and just see which files have these tags. So when you're writing tags, the way it appears in VimWiki is you have two colons and in between them is the name of your tag. So you can see right here, I have colon, Python colon, it actually changes the color of it. And what if I wanna add multiple tags to an item because this, I, this uh, specific file has multiple areas that I want to make sure I identify and I want to have it come up in different searches. So I have a, a, another sample file here, hotkeys, and at the top you can see I have hotkeys here and then Python over here. Two tags. Now the way we can do tags, the syntax of it, is just two colons and then your tag in between it, but if you have multiple you can daisy chain them like this where it just has colon, hotkey, colon, next hotkey, colon, and it, wait, that way you can just like sandwich them between colons and this is valid. What I haven't tested is if it can take spaces. It cannot. Can do underscores. It can. So spaces are not allowed. Underscores as a separating character are. Um, if it were me, I would probably just do single word or lower all lowercase and do snake case like this. So if I was gonna do something where I use multiple words but I wanted them separated, I usually would do snake case instead of camel case because camel case can get a little bit weird with this type of thing. So that's how I would approach daisy chaining your tags and having them uh, using, using words with actual spaces between them, replacing those with uh, underscores and making it lowercase. So to do all of these things, what are you going to need? You're going to need two plugins for this functionality to work for you. I have them in my VimRC. The first one you're going to need is VimWiki. 
Uh, you don't have to. You can ignore all the rest of the stuff off to the off to the side. I just I'm using the dev branch because I was doing uh, an issue I was filing on GitHub. But really, all you need is vimwiki slash vimwiki, and that is the plugin to install. You can use, I'm using um, uh, vimplug, but you can use whatever you want. But vimwiki is the first one, and the next one is uh, vim rip grep. Rip grep is like grep, but it's a lot faster, and it um, by default searches recursively. So we're actually using that within Vim to say, hey, wherever this file is stored, search recursively for this text. And the text we're searching for is the tags. And it's finding these tags in these uh, VimWiki files and putting them into the quick fix buffer that we can then select and then open up those files. Extremely useful. Now, why would we use Vim ripgrep instead of the Vim tag search that is already built in by default? I will show you why. So the first thing we're gonna do I'm going to close this quick fix buffer here. And so we're going to do vim wiki search tags. So, I mean, you could remap this. You don't have to type it. That's why it's slow. So you could always remap this. But let's see what it actually does. Okay, you can see at the bottom, it's just going through each of these files. But look how slow it is. I mean, it didn't find anything because I didn't search for anything. So let's do Python. And it's going to look for every single file in its current working directory, which is Python, which means it's not doing anything recursively. Or actually, it might do something recursively. It did find four, but it doesn't open the quick fix buffer. We can't select it. It just searches like this. Now, there's a couple other key bindings we can use with this to traverse the tags, but this alone was what put me off of the built-in functionality of tag searching either through VimWiki, um, and I think there might actually be one built in for Vim by itself, but ripgrep is so fast, and you can easily just map it to a leader character and already have the search typed out for you, like this, Python. It's just so fast that why would you want to use the other ones? So in my, in my personal opinion, I would just use ripgrep because it's easy to recursively search and grab your tags. So I currently have the search with ripgrep done with my leader T key binding. So I would map this to a key binding like that. You know, have it, if this is something that you're gonna use commonly, map it to a key binding. And currently I have it mapped to leader T and I have it in my ft plugin vimwiki.vim file. For more information about um, making your FT plugin files and doing file type specific mappings without a bunch of extra stuff like file type this, whatever, and all that, um, you can check out the card over there. But currently, leader T in normal mode will actually call, call ripgrep in command mode and start off the search text with a colon. So doing that, I do leader T, ripgrep start searching. I can type Python after that enter and it will actually open up my quick fix buffer so basically all I have to do is type the name of my tag you don't even have to finish the colon it'll just look for colon word and it'll find those and still do the exact same thing so leader T Python enter ah but it did pick up some weird extra stuff we do not like this so that's why I also will just close it off personally so that's what I have mapped it's in my ft plugin vimwiki dot vim file which means all vimwiki file types and if you look in the vimwiki files themselves you can see down here the file type is in fact vimwiki so looking through all those files when it is in a vimwiki file type you can actually do normal mode leader t call the ripgrep search and then type it hit enter and there you're off to the races so tag searching, what am I currently using it for? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not. I am actually going to be looking for a use case for this to see how I might use this. Currently with my directory structure in VimWiki, it's actually really easy for me to find what I'm looking for, especially with my um, fuzzy finding uh, bash function. So I can easily just do this. And because I have my directory structure, I can easily just type things like this. And I have, you know, so for instance, Python, well, here's all the Python things. I have a file path that starts with Python. And instead of making each file name start with Python, I have it so it's in a folder called Python. It's basically its own Python subwiki. And I like doing this instead of the actual file name saying 
Python underscore data structures so that because I might also have Rust underscore data structures and I don't want the file to be data structures and then things are overriding each other or I get links to things I don't want. And the way I got around that is I want to have each item be its own sub wiki. So I could say if I'm in um, my Python, uh, let's just say tricks folder and I'm talking about a data structure, I just want to be able to say and the data structures and the word data structures is a link to the data structures page in the Python Vim wiki, then I can just natural use natural language, just you know, using the data structures, enter, now it's a link, blah, 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 and other text. That way it automatically links to that page and the information within it. I like this because I like I don't want to have to mess with the links. I don't want to have to change the text. I don't want to have to, uh, you know, a prepend Python or whatever uh, name I'm trying to put on the file name. I just want it to be like that. Now, if I wanted to link outside of this wiki to one of the other sub wikis, I could go back to edit the link. And I feel like that's a better way to approach it just because I'm not typically linking to outside of each of these sub wikis. So when I am, that's when that extra effort of actually hard you know, uh, messing with the link itself manually would actually be worth the effort. Normally, I just want to be typing natural language, go back, hit enter, now it's a link to the item in its wiki. And that's how I typically approach this. Now, how I might use tags would be, if I don't want to create a sub wiki for everything, or if I want to just have some topic ideas or some quick tags to search for, I might use it in that instance and then search for those tags, quickly jump to those items, and those things could be across sub wikis because I could go to my base index file in my Vim wiki and then run the search with grip rip grep and then find all the items in the entire Vim wiki directory structure I have that are tagged with a specific thing and have them in the quick fix buffer and then jump to them. That might be a use case I would use. Whereas if I just want to use the Vim wiki links, I'm typically just going to stay within each sub wiki and not move the, the links outside of to each other. So that's how I might use it. If you were going to use this, or if you do use this, please let me know how you how you use it. Uh, I would love to hear what you what your experiences with this are. Uh, leave those comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a like. It'll help out uh, the algorithm. And before I go, a big shout out to my patrons, Devin and Alberto. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.